Welcome to the Yeah Man channel. It is Friday the 30th of May 2014 and this is a day of a news blitz. Today is a news blitz for me. I rarely ever do this. This is probably the most I've ever covered in one day. I don't think I usually have to do this, but today it seems like more than ever in our time that we need to address certain issues. Moral accountability is the word for it. <clears throat> mm. I could think of a lot of good examples, but I'd just rather not. This is by Wes Wal Walker. Kind of sounds like Wes Walker of the New England Patriots, boy, yeah! I like football, believe me, but it's funny how our culture kind of makes you feel guilty for watching it because that's all people really care about these days. But anyways, this article is from Wes Walker. Not to be confused with Wes Walker. Who isn't even a Patriot anymore? I just kind of remember him as a Patriot because he was awesome. But Bill Belichick didn't want to... He didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to pay him what he's worth, so he traded him to the Broncos, and you saw how that happened, you know, how all that worked out for him, so. Sorry for the confusion, I'm a little behind right now. I hardly even watch the draft. Anyways, this article is from ClashDaily.com, Elliot Roger. Guns? Crazy? Video games? Whose bastard is he? It's a question of blame, really. I'm not questioning who his natural parents are. That seems solidly established. The question I'm really asking is, whose bastard is he, ideologically? Why did he turn out to be the heartless bastard that he made that made the news? The popular knee-jerk response is that as predictable as it is worthless, was there a gun involved? Yes. Then he's obviously the NRA's bastard. Blame the guns! Ah! Sorry. <laughs> Uh, the problem with this position is I would hope, obvious even to a child, not all of the victims were shot. Some were shot, certainly, but some were stabbed. He also ran some over with his car. Whoa! I didn't even know that. That's crazy. He ran people over with his car? Yikes! If we blame the NRA for the gun, the gun deaths, do we need to blame German engineering for the people he ran over? I say yes! There cannot be one more victim of people getting run over by cars. Dang it. No, there is a simpler, a simpler explanation. The gun, the knife, and the car were each just a means to an end. Why? Because even a weak person can overcome a strong one if given adequate means. Predictably, people are blaming mental illness. This excuse sickens me. Mental illness isn't new. How many people with anxiety, depression, OCD, and even schizophrenia are living quiet lives among the rest of us? It's an insult to the rest of them to just write off, write this off as a crazy person doing things crazy things, even if some make strong cases for the position. If you guys are an InfoWars uh, fan, like I am, like everything, I take everything with a grain of salt, and so, so should you. We're not worshipping man, we worship God, and our ultimate authority comes from the Bible. But anyways, and yes, I'm addressing you Christians because obviously heathens don't listen to the truth. But anyways, lost my train of thought. What was I saying again? Oh yeah, mental illness. If you, if you like uh, Infowars and all that, then you probably hear Alex Jones always talking about um, the the drugs that are in the family of the psychotropics. Um, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. A lot of the, a lot of those, like, you know, the guy that was at the Aurora movie theater, Sandy Hook Elementary, um, there were more. The, the, the guys that the guy that shot up at the uh, Fort Hood I believe all these people were on these drugs it's very it was very interesting so why am I suggesting that to merely chalk this up to mental illness insults our intelligence twice not only does it ignore the overwhelming majority of people with mental disorders not going on killing sprees but it also writes a blank check of irresponsibility to the offender and suggests that this was inevitable. We don't do this with other people, do we? If someone spends months planning, as Elliot Roger did, any other crime, would we dismiss it as a mental break? Uh, if it were an identity theft scheme, the serial firebombing of churches, or some other crime spree, we'd denounce him as a villain, not excuse him as a chemically imbalanced... Uh, not excuse him as chemically imbalanced, excuse me. Even if early claims of a specific medical diagnosis are accurate, the planning involved undercuts any claims that it was merely a random act, irrational, and impulsive act. Uh, whatever his mental state, he is still he still made a choice. Something led him to that choice, but what? It's been well reported that this Darwinian oh, oh, holdover parked his butt in front of video games for hours on end. Is he then the video game manufacturer's bastard? Shall we blame them? It's funny that I have... Friends at church, 
and I love my friends at church. They're some of the nicest, coolest people I know. And I haven't even known them for so long, you know. Uh, I haven't even been, I haven't been a Christian for that for that long. But I'll tell you I'll tell you what. As soon as I started going to church and started meeting new friends at church, some of the nicest people that I know. And when when you read Paul's letters to the churches, uh, various places in the Bible, or you see how he writes to them, how I miss you, how he how he writes like that, the kind of love that he has for his brothers, man. That's how I feel when I leave church, man. I just I have this. I miss them so much, man. Like, as soon as I leave, I'm just like, oh, like, back to this. Back to this again. You know, like, it's just, our hope is in Christ and His return, right? Amen? So, have hope, you guys, and stay stay strong, right? We have hope. We have God. That's why we don't lose our minds. God keeps us sane. God keeps us relaxed and at rest and peace, at peace and with joy, man. Our lives are just beyond words, man. Sorry, that just doesn't fly. Many, How many legions of slackers sit in a chair killing imaginary bad guys like it was their job? Oh yeah, that's why I brought up my friends at church. Because somebody at church, well not at church, we were out hanging out. Uh, but he asked me, do you, do you play video games? And I said, and he's like, what video games do you play? And I was like, I had to think about it because I don't really play any video games. And like I told him, I was like, I don't know. I don't. And he's like, you play Call of Duty? I'm like, no. Nah. And he kind of like didn't even know how to respond to that. So it's obvious to me that that's all kids do nowadays is play Call of Duty. Did you know that first person shooter games were invented during World War I because people were getting killed on the American side because whenever somebody jumped up in front of somebody, they'd freeze because somebody couldn't, they didn't have it in them to shoot somebody blank in the face back in the day. So they had to invent first person shooters to kind of inoculate you, I guess if that's the word. Or kind of desensitize you to the fact that if somebody pops out at you, you got to shoot them because it's either your life or theirs. So first-person shooter games, in, in my honest opinion, aren't a bad thing. They're just like anything else. They could be used for bad or good. Too much of anything is bad for you. Water, you have to live. You cannot live without water. This The entire earth, I mean, we could go on a, a whole scientific study here, but too much water can kill you. Should we ban water? You know what I mean? It's stupid. Sorry, that just doesn't fly. Okay, I just read that. Do they... All go on killing sprees. Hell, some can't even be bothered to go upstairs for another bag of cheesy poofs. <laughs> cheesy poofs. Sorry. Let alone run down random passersby. What makes them different? Should we blame Hollywood? Well, that question comes close to home, considering that what his dad does for a living. Where's our Hollywood Mia culpa from the people who's so willing to point fingers at everyone else's... <laughs> everyone else we've mentioned. Don't look for one. Uh, and we probably shouldn't. Sure, they influence the values of a, of a culture. Hollywood plays an active role in social engineering. But that same influence hasn't driven the rest of us to the same crimes. If you're not aware of the influence that Hollywood has on you, it's not a coincidence. It's engineered by design to bring you into a new type of thinking. They're trying to well, conform you. No, that's not the word. They're like subconsciously getting you prepared for future things that are coming. The government knows. The government knows what's going to happen in the future because, first of all, it's in the Bible. Second of all, they know. Third of all, there's we are dealing with things that are higher than just human beings in, in this universe. We are dealing with evil spirits, man. They're real. They're real. And to, to, to if you call yourself a Christian and you don't believe in the supernatural, then... You're like a Sadducee, you're a Pharisee, you know, you're like, you don't, what do you mean you don't believe in that? If you don't believe in the supernatural, what do you mean, what, how do you believe in Jesus Christ? He was rose, he rose from the dead. People will be like, oh, you're dead God, you're dead God. You know why people say that is because so many people that call themselves Christians or that, that are religious, they wear the cross with the Jesus hanging on there and they put the Jesus on the tattoo that's bleeding with the crown of thorns and it's ridiculous. Our God is alive, you guys. It's an insult to put him on the cross. He's not there anymore. He's alive. He's sitting on his throne in heaven and he's sovereign. Everything works for his purposes. Should we blame the parents? I wouldn't. Sure, parents shape our, us profoundly, but they cannot dictate who we ultimately become. Amen to that. Thank God for that. And I love my parents, regardless who they are. How many people who rose up and became great did so many overcome their own horrific, impoverished, and abusive childhoods? Suppose we, he really did have daddy issues or whatever. That still would still be no excuse. Too many others have risen above them. I like where this person is getting at, Mr. Wes Walker here. He's getting at something very important there. Suppose he really did have daddy issues or whatever. I just read that. You know that if there was the remotest con connection to religious mania, that would be splashed all over the news. 
but he was not religious. A single screenshot of his online interactions reveals an atheist and Darwinist uh, mis misogynist and racist. A pretty cruel and violent guy. Clearly we can't blame a god he didn't believe in. I saw a comment that was so interesting. It's like on Anarchy News or something like that. This guy said that Elliot Rogers, all of his videos have been pulled down and this guy was actually advocating gun control. Which gets even more bizarre now, you guys. It gets... How do you come... I mean, so many things have to, like, happen. So much developing news. I mean, the, the things have to develop for you to fully understand what's going on. And it's this is probably one of the most bizarre things I've ever had to cover in my life. We have learned that he was a whiny, sulky jerk who treated everyone else as a means to his own private ends. Women existed, he thought, to gratify his physical urges. Others owned him... Or others owed him kindness that he was unwilling to show others. He was self-righteous and very prideful. And he was an adulterer at heart. And no, those are all bad. Just saying. He even told his mother to marry a wealthy man. The Prada-wearing BMW driver thought more money would make him happy. <laughs> it's not even funny. What, what that is is sad because people, that's an old lie. It's an old lie and people still believe it. She should sacrifice her well-being for the sake of my happiness if you guys have never seen the uh the movie that debunks the 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 movie about the trip the pre-tribulation i forgot what it's called man it's such a good movie you could probably find it under my truth videos on youtube it's funny with this guy he's like ripping money he's like it's paper it's, i mean it is it's so stupid what we fight over you guys whatever finally ca uh catalyst catalyzed excuse me those thoughts in, into actions we have seen that his attitudes and behaviors, however horrifying, actually fit within a system, a known system of thought. That system was developed by the philosopher best known for saying God is dead. Using people as means to an end, power hunger, misogyny, pit pitilessness, rejection of moral codes, despising lesser humanity, none of those things would be foreign to I ideals proposed by Nietzsche. N-E-I-T-Z-S-C-H-E. Nice. I don't know who that is. Enemy shall ye say, but not villain. Invalid shall ye say, but not wretch. Fool shall ye say, but not sinner. Sounds like an idiot. Roger said sex, love, companionship. I deserve those things. But girls are not sexually attracted to me. Deserved. Deserved? That is a problem. I'm going to rectify. I and all my magnificence and power i will not let this fly i don't know any straight man that talks like that I, I, he also said that i am sexually attracted to women no straight man will ever say i am sexually attracted to women it is a body language it is not a it's like it's like saying i'm a christian sure you are sure <laughs> excuse me you guys i'm brutally brash sometimes man whatever the myriad factors that play in his twisted world and whatever launched his sociopathic ideas into action he was already living life nice's way long before he made headlines whose bastard was he well since ideas have consequences my money is on nice whoever that is somebody inform me but anyways i'll let you go so that you guys can go on with your lives i love you humanity keep looking up